Hello and welcome to this new episode of TDO. Have you ever had that moment when a friend or colleague comes up to you because they know you're into retro computers and consoles and says, I'm moving house, I've been up in the loft and I found my old computers and your heart's skipping a beat. Are they worth anything? They ask you. Hmm, could be, depends what it is. Well, tell you what, if I bring in the box, can you check it over for me and see what you think? Of course. And this is what I ended up with, a big pile of old computer stuff. And it seemed too good to keep to myself, so I thought I would share the exploration as I prospect for geek gold. Where do we start? I guess on the top. And the first thing we have is a Galaxy Invader, created by Computer Games Limited. Uh, I don't know if it's got a date on it anywhere. Mm, doesn't appear to. Let's have a look inside. Polys are still there. Awesome. And the instructions. And there we go. Isn't that a thing of beauty? A mm, little bit of corrosion on the back there. Maybe we can sort that out for him. Can't see any dates. It's got one, two or three position on, off and reset. Left and right and fire. It's got two kilobytes of RAM and it's got a fluorescent display panel. So that's got to be 80s, must be. Uh, now this is one that's dear to my heart, ZX81. And that's where my computing started. Uh, although I had the um, SuperScore before that, which you've seen me do a refurb on, uh, this is uh, the next computer that I had. This one is in pretty good condition. It's missing a couple of the feet, but I'm sure we can sort that out. Let's pop that down the front there. Oh, cassette lunch. And then we have a WH Smith CCR 800. And back in the day, I remember going into WH Smith's at the back of the store. They had all their 8-bit computers along on one side and all the games on a shelf nearby. And uh, I used to spend loads of time in there. And this one has absolutely no corrosion on the inside. I presume either it's never been used on batteries or it was used and then the battery's taken out. I suspect we'll need to replace a drive belt because that's usually the thing that goes on these and give it a good clean. We have a ZX power supply, so we'll put that with the ZX81. All right, Ooh, everything's wanting to fall apart. Move my cup of tea and let that go down a bit. Wow, there are a lot of cassettes here. Next we have, and this is promising, a ZX Spectrum introduction and basic programming manual. Very good condition, not written in that I can see, pages not creased, excellent. So we'll put that here. We have a box poly, original polys with the Sinclair logo. And it's the official 16K RAM pack for the ZX81. So it'd be great to see if that works. I suspect on all of these, the contacts on the edge connector will need to be cleaned. Instructions even, very good. Minor repair needed on the box to stick it back together again. Polystyrene in excellent condition. So we'll put that down there with the ZX81. Time for another drink. But I think I'm going to put this behind me now. What else have we got? Okay, this is interesting. Faux leather case. Could be real leather, but let's have a look. Ah, we have the Scion Organizer 2. Now, I used to sell these in Dixon's back in the day, but I never had one. Uh, I had a Scion Organizer 3 though, and the 3A after that, uh, which I loved. I never really got on with these because they don't have a QWERTY keyboard, they have uh, alphabet order, and the screen is obviously only, I think, two lines if I remember right. But again, 
very good condition. My work colleague obviously looked after his stuff. And in the back, we have a 32K data pack and a thesaurus and spell checker. And they come out and they just slot in the back there. That's interesting. I'll have a good play with that. Pop that down there. Okay, this is the box with polys. Okay, there's nothing in that, so I presume that's the 32K data pack from in there with the instructions. And on the front, it says low power pack. So that was obviously a maybe a newer version, the older one maybe taking up more power. But obviously back then, battery power was, you know, in limited supply on these electronics. They don't sip power like modern electronics do. So awesome. We'll put that down with that. Then we have another Scion data pack. And this one says HB Games Pack, copyright 1990, HB Consultants. So we'll take a look there and see what kind of games are on there. I'm expecting it will be, I don't know, maybe word games, something like that. The graphics capability of a Scion Organizer 2 is not exactly there at all, apart from uh, characters, I, if I remember right. So down it goes. And I can see glinting at me at the bottom of this box, a rainbow. And that can only mean one thing. And Mr. Stormtrooper, Mr. Stormtrooper, do not fall over. I haven't named Mr. Stormtrooper. Any ideas what I should name him? It needs to be something that a Stormtrooper wouldn't be called, or a really boring name, I think, because these guys, they were lined up and, and they were cannon fodder. So they weren't very good aims. What do you think? Okay, mm, fair enough. Calm down. Let's dig a bit deeper then. And at the bottom, and I will take some power leads out, we have a very dusty, a very fluffy, original ZX Spectrum. I can't see any scratches on the paintwork on the metal panel that sticks on top. It's lifted a bit on one side. I think that's a common fault with these. Over time, the adhesive goes on the back and it lifts, but I'm pretty certain that can be easily resolved. Uh, this one's got all of its feet, which is great. Doesn't say how much memory. Fingers crossed, it's a 48K model. But I think maybe we can do a, I don't know, either a combined ZX81 and Spectrum refurb or separate. We'll see how it goes. Oh, this is thirsty work. Cheers. Right, what do we have next? Well, we have a bit of a rat's nest of wires, which is a Sinclair ZX power supply again. And I'm pretty certain this one definitely goes with the Spectrum because on the bottom there is a label that says this unit has been rechecked since the recall of 26.283. Interesting. I need to read up on that. I don't remember there being power supply problems with my ZX81, so maybe this was a Spectrum issue. And at the bottom it's an official label because it says Sinclair Research Limited. So interesting. And then you've got the cassette deck cables and they're the original because you've got the gray and black and the TV aerial. Um, plug needs rewiring because it's slipped out of the strain relief or was never put in properly. So we'll sort that out. And with both power supplies, they'll need to be checked before they're put into uh, any computer to make sure that the voltages are outputting correctly. So we'll pop that down there. 
And as far as I can see, what we've got left is a large pile of different cassettes. So I'm running out of space here. So with the magic of editing, I'm going to clear some space. Wow. Ugly brown box gone, and we've got three neat piles of tapes. First pile over here by Mr. Stormtrooper, who wants a name. Blank cassettes, or rather ones that are not blank because they have lots of copied games on them. Now the interesting thing is there's lots of makes I recognise, the old boot C15, so 15 minutes, that was per side, wasn't it? So you could easily find your programme. No point having a, a massive long C90 or even a, a C120s uh, because it would take ages to try and line up the tape. Um, so these were good for that. Funny enough, TDK D90. But also there's these cassettes here from ah, WH Smiths. So their C15 cassettes have some amazing artwork on them. I don't remember these. All the ones I had just had plain spaces for you to write a name. But when I was getting these out of the box, uh, I almost thought they were games, proper games in themselves, until I noticed that all the writings on them is hand done. And inside you've got where you write normally. So lots of stuff there. I will need to sift through and see if there's any interesting games on there. Um, but these days with access to the internet, um, those sort of things, more of a curiosity than anything. One piece of hardware that I didn't spot because it was about the size of a cassette is this Kempston Tri-State joystick interface. And this one is for the ZX Spectrum. And again, boxed. Excellent, so we'll put that with the rest of the hardware. ZX81, and there are some games here that I vaguely remember, but I didn't own. And I think some of them came later in the, Z in the ZX81's life. Um, first one we have here is called Gulp. And it says, can you outwit the gruesome gulper that seeks out, gives chase, accelerates and devours? I'm guessing that's probably a Pac-Man clone. 16K, ZX81. Uh, then the old Scion software. And this one simply says, Fantasy Games. I suspect there's several on there. So, vaguely remember that. Uh, one that I did have, and this is a Frogger clone called Hopper. Again, 16K, ZX81. And then we have one that looks like a copied cassette, but isn't. And this is cassette one. And these are literally just stamped onto a, an ordinary cassette. So I can imagine this was a small cottage industry. Not much bigger production values is the 16K ZX81, the Tomb of Dracula. 3D horror adventure game, awesome. Then we have Zuckman. Ah, interesting. This one came from my neck of the woods in Wiltshire. Definitely check that one out. And then we have another one from Abacus programs called Avenger. Up, down, left, right, laser bomb. Um, I'm guessing that's going to be some kind of scramble clone. Ah, another one I did have, which is a Donkey Kong clone on the ZX81 called Crazy Kong. And this one called QS Scramble, again, for the ZX81 by Quicksilver, hence the QS, in 1982. So we'll check that one out. And I didn't have this one, but another Scion one, ZX81 Flight Simulator, or Flight Simulation, I should say, not Simulator. And Again, 16K as nearly all of them are. I'm guessing graphics wise, ZX81, not exactly going to be Microsoft Flight Sim. And then one last one. Interestingly, comes with a nice folded letter that looks photocopied typewritten, telling you how to load. <laughs> Even talks about 
RAM pack wobble. Anybody who had a ZX81 knows that the connection between the ZX81 and the RAM pack wasn't that good and you could be typing in something for ages and a small wobble, all gone. That's how I learned patience with computers, I was owning a ZX, ZX81. And I think that requires a youth of today, don't know when they've got it good. Right, I need another sip of tea. So on to the next pile, which is the largest pile of them all. And I will try to get through them as quickly as possible. Right, first one is your Sinclair and it's called Play For Your Life. Then we have by Design Design, Return of the Things. Nice bit of fantasy art on the front. This one, Software by Fantasy, and it's called Backpackers Guide to the Universe Part 1. Frenzy by Quicksilver for 16k or 48k Spectrum, that one. So far, nothing I've heard of. But then I definitely have heard of this because I had this on my Amstrad, and that's the US Gold Beachhead. If I remember, there were different stages, and I used to like the anti-aircraft level. That was great. Arctic. Now I remember Arctic from my ZX81 days. Uh, Bear Bover. Don't remember that one. Ah, now I vaguely remember this one in terms of playing it. Uh, but Vortex Software, definitely remember. And Alien Highway. Uh, Encounter 2. Moving on swiftly, we have from Ultimate Play the Game. Attic Attack, that's a classic. We'll definitely be checking out the classics. Then we have, ah, now I had this one on the Amstrad. It's um, obviously looks like a reissue as a cheapy version, uh, but it's Everyone's a Wally, which if you're driving on the roads in Britain, that's pretty true. Uh, I can't even pronounce this, but this has got a uh, I'm really not sure what he is, some kind of angel Greek god type thing with wings uh, called Cockatoni Wolf by Elite. Obviously Elite I recognise as a brand but pff, no idea on that one. Then we have, ah, classic Mastertronic, uh, the purveyors of excellent sub £3 usually, £1.99 then they crept up to 2 99 and many a times I forego, I would forego a, an Easter egg or something like that and instead ask for a game and I would get a Mastertronic game. So usually very good value for money. Although Agent X, no, I'm not recognising a lot of these. But as soon as I say that, I recognise Melbourne House and I recognise Gyroscope. Uh, although I was more of a spin dizzy kind of person. Moving along, Firebird and Booty. Vague recollection, looks a bit chucky egg, don't know. Haha, <laughs> now this one I do recognise. Again, ultimate play the game and it's Jetpack, the classic. Awesome, we will definitely play that one. All right, four. Flight Simulator-ish fans, we have Tornado Low Level. Vaguely remember what the graphics look like on that. I definitely remember the name of the game. Another Ultimate Play the Game. I believe they did quite a lot of Spectrum software. And this one's called Cookie. Looks like some kind of baking game. Mm, don't recall it. But who could not recall Manic Miner, and this is the one when I went up to the uh, National Computer Museum, they actually had on a ROM hanging out the back of a 48k Spectrum. Uh, I have a feeling this will take a few more minutes to load. Then we have from Micro Mega, 3D Full Throttle. Back in the day when they felt they needed to put 3D on it to say how amazing it was that it was in 3D. Oh, right, see, this is how easy those, those cassettes were to mix up in that there's a blank cassette with the nice artwork on. 
put that over there. Okay, moving on, we have Mastertronic again and one I had for my Amstrad. So this will be an interesting one to compare. Molecule Man. And another one I had for my Amstrad, Harrier Attack from Durell Software. <laughs> so we have a tie-in with Monty Python with a Mastertronic game, the quest for the Holy Grail. I'm leaving the bigger box games to last. To me, big box, plastic box games, you know, the bigger ones, meant quality, meant expensive, special. So I'll come back to those. This one's Design Design on the run. Not Monty on the run though, but uh, just on the run. Don't remember that one. Okay, now this one's an Imagine the name of the game and interesting it's hard to tell what it's called because the artwork is so strange uh, ah Arcadia vaguely remember would need to check it <laughs> okay obviously a tie-up at the time back in the day when we had a Mr Wimpy instead of going to your McDonald's and that's a nice ocean one, early ocean logo there. Ah, I remember this one on my Amstrad. Mastertronic, finders, keepers. I love this one on the Amstrad and it's Spellbound. Again, Mastertronic and excellent value for money, the Magic Knight series games. Then we had Mastertronic Added Dimension, or MAD for short, and this is Stormbringer. Again, uh, Magic Knight one. Yes, did I have that one? Can't remember. But again, if it's a Magic Knight one, I'm expecting good things. Another tie-up, we have Flash Gordon. Again, another Mastertronic added dimension game. So I'm guessing they charged more for those. I'll come back to that. Uh, now this must be a quite an early type thing. It's just a simple cassette and it's called Tape Utility from Lerm. Okay, I'm guessing this is what came with all Spectrums from Scion, the Horizons software starter pack with a nice picture of a Spectrum on the front. Ooh, right, another sip of cup of tea. Restorative power of Earl Grey, lovely. <clears throat> Mrs. TDO is out at the moment. She doesn't like Earl Grey, she likes builder's tea, so uh, I usually use her tea bag, wave it at my water, I like it quite, there's no milk or anything, so I usually have her leftover tea bag, so a special treat that is. Moving on, we have Design Design and Dark Star, which was a great film, I wonder if that's a tie-in, don't know. Nearly to the big box stuff. Okay, this one is Centipede, but it's Spectrum Centipede from DKtronics. Then we have, ah, Raid Over Moscow. I remember the name of the game. Looking at screenshots, mm, interesting. That was always an interesting thing though. This is the Spectrum 48K version, but the screenshots on the back are for the Commodore 64. And I used to hate that when they would show you artwork from the machine that isn't what you're buying. So you're, you're like, uh, well, what does it look like on mine? It always worried me when they did that because they would usually pick the prettiest one. Um, right, we're on to the bigger stuff now. We have, uh, Oh, sorry, golf game, leaderboard, uh, Lynx golf maybe, but golf. Mm. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna get the stuff that makes me go. Mm. Uh, match day, now I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who love football games, and I don't, I'm not taken with the sport myself. I used to have a kick around at lunchtime at school, but uh, I did like, Kickoff, the Dino Dinny ones, and I loved Sensible Soccer. So, and that was all about the gameplay. 
but the ones that went too much into the sport, I, and especially when the sensible soccer went off, I don't know, was it sensible world of soccer, etc., and it got too much about stats and things like that, uh, when really I just wanted to beat the person holding the other joystick. And next we have another tie-in. We have Danger Mouse in Double Trouble with a super competition and free poster offer. Which, crikey DM, it ran out 29th of March 1985. I guess I won't be entering that. Never mind. Next, US Gold with a Sega, the arcade winners. And we have Zaxxon. Yeah, I used to like playing Zaxxon, so that'll be interesting to see what that looks like. Again, I'm looking at the artwork on the back and I'm thinking, that's not a Spectrum. Ah, another classic. Funny enough, I used to play this on the BBC B, I think. Either at school when the teacher wasn't looking or around a friend's house. And that is Spy Hunter. Um, remember Peter Gunn music on it? Again, the graphics on the back are definitely not a Spectrum. So put that with the other Sega one. Ooh. Now, I used to enjoy this one on the Amstrad. It is Zoids, The Battle Begin, and Crash Magazine apparently gave it best game of the year. So, hmm, Tommy tie-in with the toys. Check that one out. Right, let's keep going to the plastic ones. World Series Baseball by Imagine. Uh, again, screen pictures are from the Commodore 64. Graphics may vary on different computer formats. No, Sherlock. Then we have, now I remember the game. I don't remember what it looked like. War. Obviously meant something longer. It's an acronym for something because it's got the full stops in between. What did it stand for? Don't know, doesn't say. Come back to that one. Ah, so these were interesting. Double cassette, but it's only for one, so you have to get it lined up perfectly when you close the box. Oh, if I get bored, I guess I could always fire up Tazword 2 and do some typing. What did you print it out on there? Ah, I used to enjoy this. Uh, if you could get a friend round to play, Spy versus Spy for one or two players playing simultaneously. Right, then we have Adventure for Spectrum 48K, number one, Swords and Sorcery. Right, and then we have two very similar boxes, which I believe were part of the same series. We have the excellent Turner Nog. Feeling like it's something stuck together. So we'll have to investigate that one carefully without damaging the box. And I think this was the follow-up, wasn't it? Dundar Dundark. Again, some of these I was like, I, I still don't know. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Um, massive characters, lots of the screen used up, uh, and definitely Spectrum graphics on the back. So, with, so those two definitely, I think, are a series of memory. Uh, and then we have ah some letter to go with that, which is a source and s swords and sorcery additional modules. Oh, <laughs> this is, sounds interesting. Greetings, adventurer. I have failed you. Unfortunately, the wolf at the door prevents me from, from continuing work on the extension modules for source and so swords and sorcery. The two years spent developing the MIDA system was a great drain on my resources and commercial necessity forces me to abandon work on levels 2, 3, 4 and APG. Apparently they received only 200 orders for level 2 and this will not keep them alive until the next MIDA product is released. So, that's interesting. I'll have to look into that. Signed, Happy Adventuring Mike Simpson with an interesting bit of code at the bottom. So I wonder if anybody's got that. Let's definitely scan those in. I'm sure people will be interested in those. And there we go, that's the haul. 
Um, I am interested in a lot of these things. In fact, probably all of it. So what I said to my colleague is I would go through and I would get a reasonably rough price, be as accurate as I can. I'll probably use uh, eBay sold prices to get a good idea of what things are shifting for these days. I've already got an idea in my head of what the hardware is worth. Um, tapes less so, so uh, I'm guessing some of the bigger box stuff might be worth more than some of the tapes, but uh, there's quite a few here, so I'll need to catalog it all and get an idea and then make a fair price offer. Um, is there anything you want me to do a an episode on? The ZX81s, the Galaxy Invader, any of the games? Um, let me know in the usual place in the comments below. Until next time, it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from him. You stand guard. Cheers. Follow me. Hold on.